Have you ever tried to explore the secret of professional filmmakers, how they actually get their video footage so cinematic? And the secret they have is given by anamorphic lenses like the one I'm showing here from Carl Zeiss. Anamorphic lenses are super complex in their optical construction and they are also super expensive. So that lens you see here on display from Carl Zeiss is between $30,000 and $40,000 depending on where you purchase it. In this video I will offer a cheap alternative to the super expensive cinematic anamorphic lenses like the one I just showed from Carl Zeiss. And uh, the way we are going to do this is I got the package some weeks ago from Sandmark and uh, they have a lens here which is an anamorphic lens for the iPhone 11 Pro. They actually have it also for the new iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max it's all on their website. and. Um, this is a product which is highly affordable compared to the professional anamorphic lenses you get in the professional filmmaking industry. If you look at the package here, it says under specifications, lens 1.33 times squeeze. And in the course of the video, I'll explain all the basics beginner might wanna know about anamorphic lenses, how they work. I will do live demonstrations and explain all the background of these lenses and why they are so cinematic if you go and make films with it. And I will also go out of course to Zurich and do a live shooting means I take video clips with this anamorphic lens here from Sandmark. I compile them together to about 2.5 minutes of footage and give you an impression of what's going on in the anamorphic lens universe. My last remark is kind of housekeeping. Sandmark did send this gadget to me for free because they asked me for a review on my channel. And uh, it's important, first of all, from an ethical perspective to disclose this. This is a gadget I did not purchase with my own money. Second, clearly, this does not cloud my judgment. I will share with people watching this video what I liked about this lens kit, but I will also share a few thoughts what I think Sandmark could actually have done better. And third, I do not get paid for that review. So I do not receive any payments or money from Sandmark. So you can rely on my independence. And now let's kick off the video. Before we do a little deep dive into anamorphic videography, let's quickly check what was in the box in the way it was shipped to me. And first of all, in the box was a case. And this case is, I think, a very robust case. It's made for the iPhone 11 Pro, as we saw before on the box. So I can use my iPhone here, click it in, and then it's kind of sitting firmly. I think there are better ways to protect your iPhone because here are a lot of spare outs on the sides here and uh, that is different for instance if you purchase a case from Apple or from some other manufacturers but it's doing I think the job and it sits very well and now you have the option to screw in here the anamorphic lens and go for anamorphic videography. The main item shipped in the box of course is the anamorphic lens itself and the build quality is really good it looks to me like this is all made out of metal. There is a little protector sitting here, which uh, is protecting the lens from the bottom. And then you can use the lens and screw it here onto your iPhone. I should say I needed to get used to screwing it on. At the first few attempts, it didn't work very well because I didn't actually find the entry point to screw it on. But later on, it sits firmly. And there are a few more points to say about that mechanism. I'll come back to this in the course of the video. But in general now, when you get used to it, it works very well. Another item in the box is that clip here. And that clip can be used to actually again screw in the lens here and then clip it on the lens of your smartphone. And uh, I think this will also work for other smartphones if the size of the lens on that smartphone is the right one. So this is a very versatile and fungible mechanism here. And if you don't like the case, you can actually use that clip to clip the anamorphic lens on top of your native camera lens on your smartphone. Next item in the box is a little protective pouch here where you can store the lens and the accessories. Not the case, of course, that's too large if you are on the move or on travel. And then the very last item is a cleaning towel or cleaning tissue 
which uh, is required from time to time when the lens needs some cleaning. There are a couple of things that irritated me in the construction. If you look at the way the lens is screwed on the case here, there is a misalignment between that bezel here of the anamorphic lens and the upper or top bezel of the iPhone. And this irritated me at the beginning a lot. I thought I've done something wrong. And uh, clearly, since the lens always ends in the same angle with respect to this bezel here, no matter how you screw it on, there is very likely an easy fix just on the entry point of the screwing mechanism so that it ends up aligned and then it would not have irritated me. And the second point I want to make is that case is really firmly on the iPhone 11 Pro and probably based on the very solid construction here, you can also not bend it easily and it's very hard to get the case of the iPhone once you clip the iPhone into the case. Looking inside the lens reveals the main characteristic of anamorphic lenses and ignore for the moment these light reflections, these blue vertical light bar here you see on display. That's coming from my lighting here in the studio, but I want you to take note of at this point in time is the oval shape you see in the inside of the lens. And this distinguishes fundamentally anamorphic lenses from standard lenses, which are typically called spherical lenses, where what is an oval here is on spherical lenses a perfect sphere or a perfect circle. And uh, clearly this optical construction besides many other points distinguishes anamorphic lenses from what you typically have mounted on your camera. And uh, the alignment of this oval is typically towards 12 o'clock, so in a vertical direction, in order to achieve what we later will explore as the squeezing mechanism of anamorphic lenses. So now let's take off the lens cap here and let's have a look. So I'm now in the native camera app and I can rotate the lens mechanism here and then I get different outcomes. Let's see what we get. Do you see the distortion? Now this is becoming very wide with some vignetting. Now this is getting squeezed and so on and so on. There is one thing which is important and I'm going to explain in a moment why this is important. There is one marking here and that marking needs to be at 12 o'clock and then it's actually perfect. That's exactly where it should be and that's exactly what should happen here. I guess this still sounds a little bit like voodoo what's going on here. So let's start from scratch again. First of all, I dismounted the lens. So the lens is now no longer on the iPhone 11 Pro and I'm here in video mode, 4K, 60 FPS. The FPS do not play any role at this point in time in what I'm going to discuss. And you see the proportions of my Samsung screen here in the background, but also of my table, of the wall. That's all what it should be. So for instance, that instrument here on the wall should actually be a perfect sphere or circle. And that's how it should look like. Now I'm going to try from behind my film camera here to mount the anamorphic lens. And uh, that will be a bit tricky, I guess. So let's try to mount this. I think that's it. So I managed, as I said, I get used to unscrewing and screwing the lens onto the case, but from behind the camera in my current position, it was a bit difficult. Now it's actually mounted and let me adjust that little dash to 12 o'clock. And do you see the difference now? There are two things to note here. First of all, the proportions are no longer the same. My Samsung screen is no longer in the proportion it should be from an aspect ratio perspective. It's squeezed in a certain way, which we are going to look into closer in a moment. The second thing which you should have noted, and I'm going to take two screenshots to put them side by side, is that the field of view on the sides actually has become wider because you now see on the right hand side my cupboard and on the left hand side the full door here in the wall, which was not visible before we mounted this anamorphic lens here. So there's something to explain and something to understand. So I turned now the iPhone 11 Pro to the flip side and want to quickly have a look into that lens. The first thing to note is that the little dash now is perfectly at 12 o'clock, which is what is necessary to adjust for the right, let's say squeezing mechanism here on the anamorphic lens. The second thing to note is if you look into it now, you see that this oval is now in a vertical position. And that is indicating what's happening here. So we get a wider field of view in the width direction, 
but we also get a squeezed representation of what's in front of the camera in the way that the aspect ratio of my Samsung screen in the background was no longer the right one, but was squeezed. And let's quickly look into the math to better understand this. So here on the left hand side, we see the spherical lenses from the iPhone 11 Pro and the attribute spherical applies to all lenses if nothing else is specified. And spherical lenses project images onto the sensor without affecting the aspect ratio. On the right hand side, we see the anamorphic lens from Sandmark. I just took that photo and here we see this oval design in the lens in vertical direction. And uh, here the image is projected onto the sensor in a squeezed way. The most typical squeezing factors are the 1.33 we have seen here, but more cinematic is actually a squeezing factor of two and then hopefully applied to an aspect ratio sensor of four to three. The squeezing factor is always applied towards the longer dimension, which in our case here is the width or the horizontal axis. Looking into this again with two screenshots from the live demonstration we just have seen here, on the left hand side the native iPhone camera, on the right hand side the anamorphic lens mounted and you see the squeezing applies in horizontal dimension and you also see a 33% wider field of view again in the horizontal dimension in that image here. The motivation for this squeezing process actually is quite simple to explain. If you think about taking images in video making on a full frame sensor and you want to have a wide aspect ratio, then you would have these black bars at the top at the bottom. And in order to fully utilize the full frame sensor, the footage was squeezed in a way to enhance the resolution and fully leverage on the full area of the full frame sensor. So what is the value proposition anamorphic lenses are offering? First of all, you get a wider field of view as we just saw. Second, you have a much more pleasant bokeh, in particular if you have blurry background lights. Third, you get that sometimes dreamy, smooth looking view you love so much about cinematic video footage. And all three properties can be summarized under the headline cinematic of course, but hang on for a moment we are not done because if we would not inject now some post-processing, our squeezed video footage would look like the following clip here. The squeezing in the horizontal dimension makes the car in the middle look strange, makes people much longer and taller than they are and in general distorts the whole clip and basically ruins the footage instead of making it better and more cinematic. Working with squeezed footage from anamorphic lenses needs de-squeezing in post-processing. And actually in Premiere Pro, it's pretty easy to achieve that. Just right click on the clip which is anamorphically squeezed and go to modify, interpret footage, then go up to conform to, and then you choose the ratio you had on your anamorphic lens, which is 1.33 in my case, and then the clip is transformed. And now if I look in that clip and pull it into the timeline, I see it is now with the correct proportions. And after the squeezed footage has been stored and imported into Premiere Pro, it now has been de-squeezed and is usable in the cinematic way I want to use it. So if you are taking anamorphic footage in the native camera app of the iPhone, you actually have here the view without the anamorphic lens where everything looks like it should look in 16 to 9 aspect ratio and 4K video settings. And if you then mount the anamorphic lens, then you actually get the squeezed image with the wrong aspect ratio and you have to correct this in post-processing as just shown. But there are also third-party apps on the iOS app store which you can use like here for instance Filmic Pro which is the app I use most of the time for the video clips I'm going to show and uh, maybe worthwhile to mention I have no affiliation with the makers of that app. I just purchased it with my own money, used it but I found it very useful for the reasons I will outline in a moment. Here's the GUI of Filmic Pro and again you see here the image is squeezed in the same way as we saw it on the native iPhone camera but if I go into the menu I find a switch here 1.33 times anamorphic adapter and if I switch this on it does the correction I did before in Premiere Pro in post-processing automatically for me. And it's important there is another switch here if you want to use that app 
It says de-squeeze in preview only. If you activate this, your preview will be de-squeezed, but the footage stored on your camera roll will not be de-squeezed. So I recommend to keep this switched off at all times. But now the clip looks in the way it should look and you have lots of settings here in terms of resolution. You have a time-lapse feature here, which I also used in the footage I'm going to present. And it actually worked quite nicely for me because I saw immediately what I later will get in uh, the video clip stored in the iPhone film roll. Let's now look into sample video footage taken with the anamorphic lens from Sandmark, which I reviewed here. I actually combined various clips into one video with about 2.5 minutes. It contains time lapses, slow motion with 120 frames per second, 4K footage with 60 frames per second, all kinds of variations of the scheme, but all taken with the Sandmark anamorphic lens. Enjoy the video and then we are going to wrap up this little review here. I really enjoyed taking these video clips with Sandmark's anamorphic lens. I'm seriously considering purchasing the kit for my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is even better in its camera system, or maybe going for one of the cheap brands in particular from China who offer anamorphic lenses for various camera systems. And despite the fact that I did not take the time and effort to post-process these video clips, in particular for distortions at the, let's say, left and right hand side boundaries, I nevertheless think they indeed look much more cinematic than what I usually get out of my iPhone without an anamorphic lens. Many thanks to Sandmark who enabled that little excursion into anamorphic videography by sending me this lens. And many thanks to all of you for watching. If you want to support my channel, please drop me a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified if new content is coming up. And clearly now at this point in time, Happy New Year to all of you, stay safe and healthy and peace out.